Hello and welcome to Lecture 9 of Math 1B03. In today's lecture, we're going to be looking at Section 1.9, which looks at the matrix of a linear transformation. So if you may remember from our last lecture, we were looking at what a transformation is, and we looked at two special types of transformations. We had matrix transformations and we had linear transformations. And we stated a theorem that said that these two things are the same. Now, one of the pieces that we still have to check, and which we'll do in today's lecture, is we'll show that any linear transformation is the exact same thing as a matrix transformation. So that's kind of the first part of today's lecture. The second part of today's lecture is we would like to look at the geometry of a linear transformation, what's going on from a geometric point of view. And then the last part of the lecture, we want to look at these properties of a transformation on two and one to one. And we want to say, how can we determine whether a linear transformation has these particular properties? And as we'll see, is once you have a linear transformation, you can attach to it a matrix, which is what we call the standard matrix, which is the topic of the first part. And the standard matrix here encodes this particular information. Okay, so the first part of our lecture here is to talk about what a standard matrix is. Okay. So before we get to that part, let's just kind of quickly recall what we were doing last time. Last time we were talking about a linear transformation. And now this is just this kind of a special function from n space to m space with the property that you could either take two vectors, add them, and then stick them into your function, or you could first stick those vectors into your function, look at the output, and then add the resulting output. Similarly, when it comes to scalar multiplication, you could first scale your vector by your constant and then stick it in your function, or you could put your vector u into your function, evaluate it, and then scale the output, and you will get the same answer. And we saw in last lecture that not every function from Rn to Rm is a linear transformation. This is kind of a special property. Okay. So in order to show that any linear transformation can be viewed as a matrix transformation, we need some new terminology here. So the first piece of terminology here is the identity matrix. The identity matrix is an important matrix that appears numerous times in this course. And the definition is quite simple. You have an n by n matrix, so you have a square matrix, you have ones down the diagonal, and you have zero everywhere else. So that's what this large zero here means. It just means that you have a big block of zeros. So if you want, let me just draw what I3 looks like. I would have one, zero, 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 one, zero, 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 one. So I have ones down the diagonals and zero everywhere else. Now we want to actually capture some special information about this matrix. In particular, we want to be able to say something about the jth column of my identity matrix. So we have some special notation, E sub j, and that is a vector where it has n entries. The jth entry is a one, and all the other entries are a zero. So for example, this would be my E1, this column right here. This would be my column E2, and this would be my column E3. And so the, the number of columns, of course, will depend upon the size of the matrix that you start with. Now, once you fix an N, you get N of these uh, vectors, okay? And these are called, together, is called the standard basis of Rn. So E1 through En is called the standard basis of Rn. And they will appear kind of numerous times in this course. Now, what does this all have to do with the linear transformation? Well, the next theorem kind of tells us something very important about linear transformations. Okay, So here's the following fact. Suppose that you have a linear transformation. Somebody says, here you go. Here's a linear transformation. Then this transformation is completely determined by what it does to the standard basis element of the uh, domain, Rn. Okay. So this is in some ways kind of amazing. If you know where these guys go, and if you know that you have a linear transformation, you can actually determine where every single vector of Rn gets sent to in terms of Rn. Okay. So I have an example here to kind of help illustrate this notion. So suppose somebody says T is a linear transformation from R2 to R4. Okay. And because we're looking at our domain as R2, 
we need the standard basis of R2, which contains E1, which is 1, 0, and E2, which is 0, 1. Okay. And this person who hands me my linear transformation tells me the following facts. They tell me that when you stick in the first standard basis vector, you get as output, you should get an output as a, a vector in R4. And in fact, you're going to get 1, 2, 3, 4. And when you stick in the second vector, you're going to get the vector 1, 1, 0, 0. Okay, so interestingly enough, there's actually enough information so far in this example to find a formula for the function evaluated at any vector in R2. Okay, so I'm going to give you a minute to think about this. This will be a good place to pause this particular lecture. And when we re resume, let's we'll work through the answer to this. What is actually the formula for this uh, linear transformation? 